Weedle. It's one of the weakest Pokemon ever. It's tied for the lowest base stat total in this generation, and even as of Generation 8, with hundreds of Pokemon later, it's tied for 7th lowest. So, beating the game with this thing is going to be next to impossible. Which is why we're going to cheat for the first time. I'm actually going to use a Game Shark code to make this Weedle a perfect Weedle, have max DVs. Even though it's a 1 in 60,000 chance to actually get a Weedle like this, I don't think this is going to work anyway. And at the very least, if I'm going to call something impossible, I want to at least know that even with the best Weedle ever, it wasn't something we were capable of doing. So, that's how we're going to do this. Now, if you're wondering what moves does Weedle learn, it learns two moves. The first is Poison Sting. It gets the same type attack bonus, but at base 15 power, that means, effectively, it is a 22.5 base power attack which I think gets round down to 22, but it doesn't really matter. In red and blue, it has a 20% chance of poisoning the target, and in red and blue, poison only deals 1 16th of the opponent's HP every single turn. So in other words, it's awful. The other move is literally useless. String shot, it lowers speed. We're probably gonna be way higher level than everything, so we're gonna outspeed them. So this move just wastes space. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, as anyone would, how in the world is this going to defeat Brock? And the answer is, this is going to go worse than you even think, because of a glitch that exists solely in Generation 1. Now, I don't even attempt to battle Brock until level 19, because I actually had tried a Weedle run years ago, and I found out about this. So here's the deal. Most Pokemon games, the lowest amount of damage you can possibly do is 1. But in Generation 1, they messed up. So if a Pokemon's defense is high enough, like after a few defense curls, and if your move is double resisted, like to rock and ground, which poison is, you have a chance of doing zero damage. The game will just tell you the attack missed. But it has 100 accuracy, and even though there's the 1 in 256 chance, when you start missing over and over and over again, you realize something is wrong, so I looked it up. Now, you can kind of see what the quote-unquote strategy is going to be. Use Poison Sting, Brock has 5 full heals per Pokemon, but if he uses a full heal, he's not attacking. We need to poison Geodude 6 times as quick as possible, and we also need to be at high enough attack that even after a few defense curls, we're at least doing one damage. That's not happening at level 19. What level will it happen at? And don't forget, it's not like there are super high level Pokemon all around me. I'm playing blue version, so it's easier to knock out the Metapod, even though Kakuna gives slightly more attack. But it's still taking a very long time to level up. I try again at level 22, one of the highest levels we've ever been. And Geodude is using Defense Curl right away. That's good, we're gonna find out pretty quickly whether or not there's a point in which we stop doing damage, and as it turns out, there is. Which is a problem, because this is gonna take many, many turns. We need Geodude to be able to use all six Defense Curls, and we still do at least one damage. That doesn't even guarantee we win, by the way. It just guarantees we do damage. So it's now taking me about 8 minutes at 4 times speed to level up, which is insane. Usually at this point we can at least knock out Geodude and gain some more experience points, but no. Because in this battle, although it's looking good, after 5 defense curls, we stop doing damage. So we are close, but we're still not able to defeat this thing. Alright, so at level 24, we encounter a new problem. We're now doing damage with every single Poison Sting, but, and this is gonna go really fast, we don't have enough Poison Stings. So you might ask, well, what about Struggle? You may know that when you use up all your moves, you then get the move Struggle, but there's a problem. Every time we attack with Struggle, we take back Recoil damage. Since Struggle is likely gonna be doing one damage, we're always gonna be taking back one damage which would knock us out due to recoil. 
but I don't think we have another choice. There just seems no way we'll have enough poison stings to knock out both Geodude and Onyx unless we get to like level 50. Finally, at level 25, after what feels like an eternity, it's actually been two hours, we finally make it past Geodude. How? Well, the best way to make it past Geodude is just to get luck with poison. Because the more poison damage Weedle does, the less you need to use Poison Sting. So you need to, as we talked about, Poison Geodude six times. Thankfully, because we've been knocking out all these Metapod, Tackle isn't doing very much to us. And with a lucky critical hit, well, actually a couple lucky critical hits, Poison Damage and Poison Sting, we knock out Geodude and for the first time we make it to Onyx. Now, the idea with Onyx is the exact same thing. Onyx does no Bide, it doesn't really matter because it's only going to be dealing back 6 damage. We're only dealing 3 damage, and all I need to do is poison this thing and we should be good. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to have enough poison stings to do that, and I'm starting to realize that we're probably going to need to combine poison sting as well as struggle. But there's another issue. Onyx can use Screech, and while its tackle didn't do a lot initially, Eventually, after all those screeches, it's doing quite a lot of damage. So, we're going to need to use Struggle, and we're going to need to knock it out kind of quickly, but at least that was progress. Alright, so what I do is I don't bother leveling up, and I use all but 10 of String Shot, just because I don't want to take damage from Bide right away if we don't have to. I really want to poison both Geodude and Onyx. I wish poison was 30% like it was in modern games, but we just need to keep attacking. Slowly but surely, it is lowering Geodude's HP, and once its HP falls completely, I decide to use a couple string shots. I think I might have too many. And finally, after what feels like an eternity, Geodude is knocked out. Next comes out Onyx. I'm going to use string shot just in case he uses Bide. And it's also going to make it slower than me, which is kind of nice. I'm then going to spam Poison Sting and really hope it stays poisoned, because then I can do damage while Bide is going on, which would be nice. I'm almost out of String Shots, so that means we have one more, and now we've got to use Poison Sting. I'm really hoping it's going to stay poisoned, but it's not looking likely. And after we use up our last Poison Stings, it turns out Brock still had a full heal. So, we're stuck using Struggle, and there it is. At the worst possible time, Brock uses Bide. I don't think we're going to be able to knock it out, so we're going to have to try again. Wait. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I'm actually stunned. We did it. Oh my god, this took me two hours, guys. Two hours. This was almost as bad as Abra. Holy moly. But unlike Abra, where the game got really easy after this... We're stuck using a Weedle. We don't get TMs. We don't get new moves. We're stuck with Poison Sting and struggle sometimes. This is going to be a nightmare. Mount Moon wasn't easy, but we have so much to talk about. We're just going to have to skip ahead to Rival 2. We are 9 levels above Pidgeotto, and that does mean we outspeed. However, we don't come close to one-shotting and Sand Attack proves to be a real issue. We knock out the Pidgeotto, and at the very least I'm going to gain some useful experience points, but I don't think we're going to win the battle, and in fact, we don't even make it to Charmander. This is the big issue with the Pokémon that cannot knock out Pidgeotto quickly. It has so many turns to use Sand Attack, and that can lose me the battle right there. Now, I'm trying to commentate these battles as best I can, but in reality, it's just a matter of using Poison Sting and hoping for a positive outcome. This battle is not looking good because of all the crits Pidgeotto is getting, but like I said, it's just about leveling up. Thankfully, the Rattata doesn't attack me. We do actually make it to the Charmander. We get a crit, but thanks to Growl, we don't knock it out, and there's the Ember. So we come really, really close, but it's hard to get too invested in these battles because it is just kind of luck at the end of the day. And I can't... Oh, God. So I actually won with Paris here. So I actually have to reset. I'm allowed to use my HM Pokemon if they're just going to get knocked out. 
But unfortunately, I didn't deposit them because I usually don't. Normally, I don't battle Rival 2 for experience. I battle to defeat him, but we clearly need all the experience we can get. We're a Weedle. And remember I said it's hard to get too invested in these battles because it's all just luck? Well, we have a pretty good battle against Rival 2 here. Pidgeotto does use Sand Attack. We knock it out with 45 HP. We're going to knock out Abra without taking any damage eventually. And then we make it to Rattata. We don't miss against Rattata, and we get a clutch crit. So we made it to Charmander with 45 HP, which you think might be enough, but no. Now the Sand Attacks catch up to us, Growl, and just like that, a really promising attempt is nothing. We lose. I have nothing better to do. We're not going to defeat Misty, so I just keep battling the rival. Two Sand Attacks, Gust, a third Sand Attack, we start missing, and... Finally, we knock out Pidgeotto at 44 HP. Abra's a one-shot, so the badge boost glitch is helping us offensively here. We knock out Rattata at 27 HP. We miss Growl. We miss Scratch. We miss Scratch. We miss Leer. We miss Growl. We hit Growl. We hit Leer. We hit Poison. Scratch misses Gen 1 miss. We hit now a couple times, and Charmander actually knocked itself out due to Poison. I just don't have words for these guys. I I don't have any impact on these battles, it seems. I just have to try them enough times and hope for a positive outcome. And that's part of why I didn't want to make this video. I love strategy. I love trying different things. But in this run, it really does feel like you keep running up against a wall, hoping one of the times you break through. It can happen. The wall might weaken. But it's hard to tell, and it's hard to get that invested. But I guess my attitude should be a little different for this one. I mean, I guess it should be more about how far can I actually get, and what level did it actually take me to defeat these things, and less what did I do in the individual battle, because it's always going to be use Poison Sting or maybe use Struggle. Nugget Bridge, thankfully, is going to be a lot easier than Rival 2. Not easy, but easier. To give you an idea, it took me 20 minutes to get through Nugget Bridge. Mewtwo's entire run, my first time, took me 45 minutes. So that is the distinction between what might be the worst Pokemon and the best. Anyway, I'm going to try battling Misty because why the heck not? Poison Sting looks to be a 4KO without X Defend, and we get a Clutch Crit, so it is a 4KO. But then Starmie comes out. X defend and it's going to be what an eight hit KO. There's just no way, especially with how bad my special is. We're not going to be able to do this at this level. I don't really care. We can come back and beat Misty later. We can get fly later. Trust me, the amount of time it's going to take to do this run. It's not going to be impacted by some slightly unoptimal gym order. Now, normally this is the point where I talk about the SSN and getting body slam, but of course we can't learn body slam. We're still going to use the SSN to do something helpful, level up. There are tons of trainers in here with sort of weak-ish Pokemon. We're going to battle all of them, and I do mean all of them. We've done that to this point, I just haven't mentioned it yet. When it comes to Weedle, a trainer not battled is experience points left on the table. We're going to need to be at a crazy high level to do this, so the more easy trainers we can beat, the easier it'll be to beat trainers like Misty, because we're not close, right? We're not close. We're not going to be close against Surge, maybe Erica, to be quite honest, because of our typing, but we need tons and tons and tons of levels. By the way, this also means battling all the trainers on Route 11. I almost never even go to this route, ever. And now we're beating every trainer. We need the experience points. So after a literal hour of battling trainers, I'm at level 37, and I can battle the rival... Poison Sting is doing about a third, just under, because it takes four hits to knock out Pidgeotto. And it was able to hit me with a Sand Attack, which is really bad. We do knock out the Raticate at 70 HP, and we hit Kadabra, and it doesn't hit us with Confusion, which is good. Unfortunately, Charmeleon hits us, gets a burn, and so, although it might have looked like we could have won at this level, we still lost at level 37! Well, I was so annoyed, I used some of my rare candies, and now I'm at level 40. Now, instead of looking like it's going to be a 3 KO, Pidgeotto actually was and didn't use Sand Attack. 
Raticade actually attacks me in tail whips, then quick attacks, but we knock it out in three hits. Kadabra goes for teleport. We have 83 for Charmeleon, one ember, two embers, the burn, and a critical hit. Wow, oh my god, I can't believe I just kept getting burned. But we do win in spite of that. And we can move on to what? That's the thing. That's the thing that sucks. That's what makes this run so soul crushing. Even when you win, it's not like we get access to a new TM. It's not as if we're going to evolve and get better stats. It's just more Weedle and more Poison Sting. Well, we are at a much higher level. We should beat Misty. We get a crit, so it's a 2 Ikeo on Staryu, and we're outspeeding Starmie. It's still going to take like 100 hits, although we got another clutch crit. And with the poison, we knock out Starmie. That was pretty lucky, but I don't care. I don't care. Guys, we're going to need a little bit of luck. A lot of bit of luck. All right? When we get lucky, we say thank you, and we move on. I could save Surge for later, but I might as well just battle him now. If for no other reason, then I get a defense boost for the rest of the game if I beat Surge. There are no more trainers to defeat, so we're not really at a higher level. Let's hope this works. First up is Voltorb, and I don't want to see Sonic Boom, which I do. The second Poison Sting, it goes for X Speed, and then of course it outspeeds and hits with Sonic Boom. So that's really bad. Next comes out Pikachu. We don't one-shot. We do poison it, not that that really matters. It goes for Thunder Wave, which is terrible. We're paralyzed, which is terrible. And now I'm thinking about whether or not I should reset. I decide not to. We get it with Quick Attack. We knock out Pikachu. Raichu uses Thunderbolt. And okay. Sure. So I'm going to just switch my other Pokemon in, let Raichu knock them out, and take the experience points because it seems like we definitely need them. But even though we're using a Weedle, this is still Surge. So in the next battle, Sonic Boom, Poison Sting, it's poisoned, which is pretty good. And then it uses Screech, we knock it out. Pikachu, this time X Speed, we get a crit. And then Raichu, X Speed, Thundershock, Growl, we get a poison. And thankfully, because it doesn't use Thunderbolt, we're able to knock it out. Although that Growl was really annoying. Second try victory, Lieutenant Surge. I'll take it, man. I'll take it. I, oh my god, this run, I want you to understand, 12 hours so far in in-game time. I have done 60 of these challenges. Pidgey, the worst Pokemon other than Abra, which because I had to use Struggle and Teleport was really bad. It still beat the game two hours quicker than it took Weedle to beat Lieutenant Surge. Now... Normally, I would just skip ahead to Celadon, but I can't. Because there's a trainer that we all know Weedle's going to have a really tough time against. It's everyone's favorite NPC, the hiker with the two Geodude and the Graveler, that used self-destruct. How long is this going to take me? Well, joke's on you. I can't even make it to him yet because the Pokemaniac with a Slowpoke? Yeah, that's super effective. <laughs> this is so bad. This is so bad. No matter where we go, we just can't make progress. Everything is such a struggle. Now, in case you were thinking Jero's just used struggle, that will be easier. Oh, don't worry. I got you. I use struggle, and we do knock out Slowpoke, but we don't have enough HP remaining not to knock ourselves out, which is why I don't like using struggle. I battled this guy like 10 more times before I actually did win because I leveled up and we had just enough HP. I did end up using Struggle. It just made the most sense. And even though I got confused, I was able with a critical hit to survive on just one HP. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. And you know what my reward is for beating that Pokemaniac? We have to battle another Pokemaniac with a Slowpoke. <laughs> it just doesn't end. It doesn't end. <laughs> this time we win on our first try because there's no Cubone before it. But oh my. It's just this run, man. 14 hours, 8 minutes. We're going to pass Abra before we defeat Erica. We're finally about to battle the Hiker. This is going to go so poorly. All right, so Poison Sting's doing nothing. How much does self-destruct do? 
Oh, that actually is kind of good. If we level up a little bit more, things would be great. Unfortunately, it can also use Rock Throw, which is substantially better than Self-Destruct. But I do have an idea here. If they all use Self-Destruct immediately, I might be able to just win. Unfortunately, this proved a bit easier said than done. I mean, I have no control over what the hiker does, and anytime it uses Rock Throw, we just lose too much HP. So we do make it to Graveler for the first time, but by the time we do, Self-Destruct would knock us out anyway, and it doesn't even use it. So we're just gonna lose. We actually take away half its HP due to poison, so it's not awful, but I could probably use another level or two. Unfortunately for me, there's really nothing to fight here that's good for Weedle, so I just keep battling the Hiker. If you lose, you get sent all the way back to the beginning, so it's not fun to lose. We do level up after the first Geodude, so I have leveled up a little bit, and with 41 HP, there is a chance we could survive self-destruct from Gra- Oh, we do! So even though I didn't level up as much as I might have wanted to, the little bit I did actually seems to have made a difference since we survive on just 6 HP, relief more than anything, but we're finally able to make it to Celadon City. Now this is the only gym I actually think I'm gonna have an easy time with because I double resist grass and I'm over leveled. So of course I'm gonna battle every single trainer in this gym. Why not? But there's very little I think most of these Pokemon can do to me. They can use Wrap, which is annoying, but we're not really going for speedrun world records here. We'll be fine. Or so I thought. I ran into a bit of an issue where Pokemon would use Stun Spore and then Wrap, and then I'd be trapped and it would take a really, really long time and then I would lose. And eventually I got really, really frustrated by this. And so I decided just to defeat the easier trainers in Rocket Hideout because if I'm having this much trouble against the random trainers in Erica's gym who I have a really good matchup against, I'm going to have a really bad time against Erica. So I skip Giovanni but battle everyone else in Rocket Hideout. And now we have Poison Sting versus Victory Bell. It's going for Rap. It gets a critical hit which sucks because that means every hit is a crit and it hits four times. So that's very annoying. I'm sitting there just trying to figure out, all right, should I reset? Should I just keep going? I decide to keep going, and I knock out Victory Bell on 57 health. Tangela thankfully misses with Bind, hits with Constrict, but since it's poisoned, it's all right. Now I just have to knock out Vileplume, but of course, it gets a critical hit with Petal Dance on two of its hits, hits with Sleep Powder, puts me to sleep, and then knocks me out with Petal Dance. I lost to Erica, who is using moves that I double resist. The luck was abominable, but still. Even Erica, I can't first try. Of course, I'm just gonna battle her again. This time, Victory Bell misses the first time. Second wrap doesn't crit. The third one does, and it hits four times, which really sucks. It hits again with wrap, and by the time I knock it out, I have a nice amount of HP. Tangle is gonna be a three KO, it lowers my speed, and I have 66 HP for Vileplume. It goes for Mega Drain, crits, another Mega Drain, another Mega Drain, it's fine. Sleep Powder, one turn of sleep, it goes for Petal Dance, two turns of sleep, three turns of sleep, four turns of sleep, but it hits itself in confusion. Then he uses Mega Drain, I finally wake up, I have 18 HP, it goes for Petal Dance, and we knock it, no we don't, oh my god, oh, <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. We did win, but barely. Three HP remaining, so all that leveling up in the rocket hideout, 100% necessary. I don't have words for this run. And the next person typically would fight is Giovanni. I don't even know if I want to do that or if I want to just go to rival four. I decide just to try Giovanni. I know this is going to go badly. I'm going to just go for Poison Sting. I get a poison really quickly. Unlike with Brock, Onyx cannot heal it. But on the other hand, it knows Rock Throw. And even though it misses 35% of the time, actually, it's missing way more than that. It's not good. I do make it past Onyx, but only at 46 HP. And then the Rhyhorn can use Horn Attack, and it's going to knock me out. So, yeah, this is not going to work. 
I don't even get Rhyhorn to half HP. There actually aren't a ton of trainers left. There is the Fighting Dojo you can access right away. You can't get into Self Company until you defeat the Pokemon Tower. And you can't do that until we have the Sylph Scope, which is why we need to defeat Giovanni. We can at least battle Rival 4 and some trainers on Route 12, but that is it. After that, I have to battle Giovanni again. This time I decide to go for Struggle and it's doing a lot more damage, but the recoil is a problem. This time Onyx is getting decent luck with Rock Throw and it doesn't look like this is going to be possible. I make it past Onyx with just 28 HP and I'm actually going to make it, well, slightly farther. I get Rhyhorn to just under half HP, but we might try again just because of how bad luck we got with Rock Throw, but I don't think this is going to work. So we got one Rock Throw miss, two misses with a crit, a hit, and okay, this is about as good as it's going to be, 92 HP. So this is make or break time. I'm basically figuring out right here, hence the pause, whether or not I can mathematically knock out these Pokemon before I knock myself out to struggle. So Ryorn is hitting with Horn Attack. We get two hits, three hits. So we do make it pass with 26 HP. But the problem is after critting the Kangaskhan, we do get it to half HP, but we are pretty much knocked out. So we have almost beaten Giovanni. We don't have enough HP. We got really, really good luck against Onyx. It just simply isn't going to happen right now. There's really very little I can do. There were a couple trainers I left on Route 8, and I did then go beat the trainers on Route 12, but the only other thing I could really do is battle Rival 4, so I do that. This battle, for once, goes pretty well. I mean, it does take a little while because I get hit by Sand Attack, so I start missing, but there isn't all that much the Rival can do to me. Thankfully, I am really overleveled being at level 50. And man, missing against Execute is just brutal because it just puts me to sleep. Not once, but twice. Then it uses Barrage. Actually the worst. Really, really annoying. Honestly, I don't know why they're... Oh my god, third time. It just obsessed with accuracy moves. I just can't get any luck. It's just so annoying. And so you just kind of have to keep waiting and waiting, and eventually we're at half HP. We actually could lose now. Gyarados is pretty strong. It goes for Leer. It gets poisoned. I'm going to knock it out here. That's good. Kadabra, hopefully we one-shot. I don't know if we will. And if we don't, Kadabra could actually knock us out here. So this could be pretty bad. We one-shot. And now Charmeleon, we miss. Ember doesn't do a lot. We miss. Ember doesn't do a lot. It's poisoned. And we knock it out with a grit. Nice! Okay, so we got some good luck at the end. Man, that was annoying, and we didn't even level up. But at least we made some progress. I've basically run out of other things to do. I have to beat Giovanni here. I try Poison Sting strats again, but maybe it's a bad idea. It just, it does too little damage to Onyx. And so, even though we don't have to worry about recoil, Rock Throw just slowly takes, well, not even that slowly, takes away my health. Thankfully, we do start to see some misses, but we're still not going to make it pass with very much HP. Just two. And by that point, Rhyhorn just knocks us out. There's nothing I can really do here. I've been stuck on Giovanni 1, not 2, not 3, 1, for about an hour now. I'm going to use Struggle Strats again. You can just find a Metapod, makes that pretty easy. And we get one Rock Throw, two Rock Throws three rock throws and okay we make it with a nice amount of hp probably not enough we had 95 last time and yeah it's definitely not going to be enough we can make it past ryorn but after we attack hingus Khan once we lose and here is where the way i was doing this run started to change what i mean by that is i started to think a lot more about the math of the run now, I'll admit, I'm not very good at math, but there was this guy in my chat who I'd never really spoken to before who claimed to be a math teacher and was helping me figure out what HP I would need at each section in order for the battle to be mathematically possible. Yes, there is some luck because Kangaskhan can use Rage or Comet Punch, but just what I would need before I could just reset and not waste my time. 
This is not the only battle where this is going to come into play, and unfortunately, that person is now one of my Twitch moderators. So, yeah. Thanks, Weedle. Alright, so I level up one more time and battle Giovanni. Don't forget, it takes about an hour to level up now. So, I just go over struggle. I get hit twice with rock throw. It misses once. So, technically, this is possible with 90 HP. We get a guard spec, a crit, and I can already tell you this isn't going to be possible. But I don't think yet I knew what the exact number was. And as you're going to see, we lose to Kangaskhan. This happens again and again and again. We actually get one run that's really, really close. One run. One battle that's very close. This isn't a run. This is a freaking easy battle. But with great luck, we make it to Rhyhorn with 123 HP. Then we lose a bunch. We make it to Kangaskhan with 60. And it uses guard spec. We actually would have enough HP, but it crits with Comet Punch. So there's just way too much luck involved. And I am starting to really, really get frustrated by this. Like I said before, I'm out of trainers, so to level up, I need to go to Diglett Cave. You can tell that leveling up will matter. We'll have more HP, we'll deal more damage, we'll take less damage. It just takes a really, really, really long time. We've been stuck at Giovanni 1 for an exceptionally long time. I'm at level 57, but at the end of the day, there's still a ton of luck if Rock Throw hits or not. We make it past Onyx this time with only 83 health, which is probably not enough. I just want to see what happens if we get average or bad luck, and we make it to Kangaskhan at 22 HP. Struggle still isn't particularly close to two-shotting, so we need luck. We need luck. Well, in my very next attempt, we get a little bit of luck. Onyx hits with the first Rock Throw, misses with the second, and hits with the third, so I make it with 97 HP. That's not bad. Rhyhorn, horn attack, guard spec, horn attack. So we have 43 HP. After struggle, we have 22, and we get the critical hit we need to knock out Kangaskhan. Now all we need is better luck with rock throw, so we would have had enough HP to knock it out. But for the first time, we actually knock out the Kangaskhan. We have other Pokemon in our party that does not count as a win, we're allowed to have them for HM purposes only, but they cannot impact the battle. Having my Weedle faint, unfortunately, that would count as a loss if it was just the one Pokemon, so I have to reset here. However, I realize if I level up a little bit more, this will be more consistent, and there's going to be harder fights ahead. So now I'm at level 60. So we use Struggle, Rock Throw misses. The next turn, Guard Spec. The next turn, Rock Throw hits. We make it with 126. Struggle. Horn attack. We're at 105. Now, after recoil, 86 after the horn attack. Almost knocks out Rhyhorn. 65 heading to Kangaskhan. Struggle not doing half. Rage is good. And it's not gonna work. So, so close. <laughs> so, so close. We even got rage. We were so close. You can see that the leveling up was worth it, but it's... Oh, God, guys. It's so bad. We are so, so close. Please, please let me win. Finally, after two hours of battling Giovanni, I get struggle, rock throw, miss. Struggle, rock throw, miss. Struggle, rock throw, hits, crit. But 117's enough. I get a struggle, crit, guard spec. Another struggle, horn attack. We make it with 73, that's pretty good. This time, Comet Punch from Kangaskhan. Another struggle, it's at 7 but it uses a guard spec, and with 3 HP to spare. As I predicted, I did need every single level we got. And finally, Giovanni number 1, a battle we normally just gloss over, is a victory for us. Wow. <laughs> I just don't have words. And do you want to hear something terrible? I mean, they're not so bad anymore. But the channelers are pretty awful considering we are double resisted by them. Actually, I'll just show you the first one because, I mean, even though they're half our level, they're still pretty scary with Lick, with Nightshade, with Confuse Ray. We can still lose. Thank goodness we have so much HP because we're going to need it. <laughs> it's just not good. It's not good at all. You can see, even though we win, how we could lose. 
We're going to skip ahead, though. There's just so much more to talk about. Finally, after over 20 hours of gameplay, we've made it to Fuchsia, but I'm not going to battle Koga. There are tons of trainers on routes 13 through 15, and we got to battle them all. Actually, 15 through 13, depending on which perspective. But yeah, we're going to need more experience. I had a very hard time battling all of the bikers and cue balls, and Koga is going to be even tougher, let alone rival Fievel. Oh my god. This run is going to take an eternity. Now, you might think because we leveled up so much that nothing's really going to be that much a challenge. All these trainers should be easy. Let me show you this juggler with a hypno. Optional, but just worth it a try. So, you can see how much confusion does. We look like we're going to win, then it goes for Psychic. And just like that, it looked like a fairly easy win to an instant loss. And that's just a random trainer in Koga's gym. Now, I realize Koga himself doesn't use Psychic Pokemon, just a wheezing with self-destruct that's probably going to be a huge problem. But in order to ensure it's as little a problem as possible, I'm going to battle all the very many trainers in Sylph Company. There are a ton of them. They all resist Poison Sting. Well, not all, but most of them do. And it's going to take me a while, but I think it's going to be worth it. Finally, three hours after we last battled Erika, I'm going to be battling another gym leader, Koga. I'm going to use Struggle. We'll see how it goes. We're at level 68. We use Struggle. It does about half to coughing. It goes for Tackle, but it doesn't quite do half because it takes an extra hit to knock it out. That's annoying. Muck's going to be a 3 KO, but thankfully it goes for X-Attack and Poison Gas. Unfortunately, however, it's become very clear after the second coughing gets knocked out, we don't have enough HP to do this. There's no possible way. We barely got attacked, and yet we were going to knock ourselves out to struggle, even if we got a critical hit every single time. This just simply will not work, so we're going to have to come back later. Probably a lot later. I don't think Poison Sting strategy is a good idea, just because of how bulky Koga's Pokemon are in defense, and how weak Poison Sting is, combined with the fact it's not very effective. We're going to have to use Struggle, we're just going to need it to be more powerful, and we're going to need more HP. I still have some trainers left to battle. And so at least I'm making some progress. I go to give myself another PowerPoint up because I do typically need more Poison Stings for these average battles. And watch what happens. Now, for those of you who don't understand what happened, let me explain. I play these games on the Retron 5, a clone console that takes cartridges. It does have save states on them that I don't really use. There was a combination I've since changed, where if you press start plus down, you get the Retron 5 menu to appear. I didn't notice I had done that, and I pressed start and then down to use the items menu. Unfortunately, in the Retron menu, that made me load state with no way to reverse it, which, because of how this system works, completely overwrites my current save file. All my progress was gone or was it because you can back up your retron save to the cartridge that's a key feature thankfully because i'm always scared of the worst possible thing happening i had done that but at level 53 we were all the way back to battling giovanni number one at least we knew what level we had to be but this was devastating it took me two and a half hours to get back to Koga, although I am at a higher level, so technically I made more progress. Now I use Struggle, it's doing well over half. I knock out the coughing, I have 168 health left. Muck goes for Disable, and then X attacks. So no attacks, I'm at 100 HP. Now Struggle, Tackle is fine, 53 for Weezing. I use Struggle, it uses Self Destruct, and. Despite how high my level is, this just isn't going to work. We don't have enough HP for Weezing, unless it doesn't attack us, and even then, I think Struggle is going to knock us out. We were barely attacked, and yet we still lost. So the only thing I can really do is to leave. As much as I don't want to, it's the only thing I can do. Unfortunately, just like with Giovanni 1, we've battled everyone we possibly could, so I guess I can try Rival Fievel, but this isn't going to go well. 
I'm gonna use Poison Sting for now. It is a little more safe. We use it. Pidgeot goes for Wing Attack, which is fine. We make it through at 161 HP. Thankfully, because of good AI, Execute can only use Reflect, it seems. And so we're gonna make it past with still 161 HP. Gyarados is attacking, however. And so we knock it out at 118. Alakazam gets a crit with Confusion. So we make it past with 34. And although Charizard doesn't have Flamethrower, Ember is enough to knock me out with 34 HP. That is not looking good. I do try again because that Alakazam did get a critical hit, but it doesn't make much of a difference. In fact, by the time I make it to Charizard, this time I'm only at 14 HP. And once again, it's going to knock me out easily. I believe it only can go for Ember. So we need to either use Struggle or level up a lot more. I choose level up more. I use my rare candies. Now I'm at level 79. Unfortunately, against Pidgeot, I get really awful luck. And because of its critical hit, it's going to be 153 HP, which is actually less than my first battle. Gyarados can also go for Dragon Rage, which is pretty bad. And by the time I make it past it, I'm only at 59 HP. I do crit the Alakazam. However, I still get one shot by Charizard. So even at level 79, it still doesn't look like we're going to beat Rival Fievel anytime soon. I need to level up. But... What trainer can I battle? How about Rival Fievel? I can battle him again and again and again. If I win, that's great. If I lose, I just don't reset and I gain experience points. We're making it at least a Charizard every single time. So might as well just keep those experience points. And that's exactly what we do. This time we make it with 93 HP, which looks really good. You can see I pause. I'm excited. We level up. 96 but unfortunately we get a very unclutch burn we came close to winning there but at least i got to keep those experience points and it'll just make it all the more likely i win hopefully soon well how about the very next attempt yeah i usually don't spoil it like this but i do end up winning which is kind of nice we saw it coming and it's really cool when you can see your progression even with that critical hit from pidgeot we get a critical hit 179 to execute reflect as we know it's a 2 -a KO now Gyarados hopefully doesn't go for Dragon Rage we get a Leer miss a Leer hit and it's a 3 -a KO Alakazam it's not a 1 -a KO it gets a crit itself which really sucks however luck is on my side we get two embers and then we get a critical hit I was very very happy about this because you know when you're stuck at a section of a game for four hours and to be fair part of it was a tech glitch but it is so nice to finally have the ability to move on to be fair unlike defeating koga it's not really going to open up that much more of the game in fact it's going to open up a trainer i really don't want to battle which is giovanni 2 based on how bad giovanni 1 was well to be fair there's no onyx this time but still i'm not looking forward to this but progress is progress. Now, I don't have Struggle ready, so I have to go with Poison Sting. Nidorino does resist it, but it can't really deal that much damage to me. So we knock it out with just 29 HP lost. Kangaskhan goes for Bite. It's dealing quite a bit of damage with Comet Punch. And we still do knock it out with 167 HP. Rhyhorn, however, double resists. And after it uses Tail Whip a bunch of times, Stomp and Horn Attack deal a lot more damage. This is why Struggle is just so much better. Only single resist. Base 50 instead of base 22.5. We do knock out the Rhyhorn. But Nidoqueen also double resists. And it knows Body Slam. So this just isn't going to work. I did try it a couple times. But it's very clear just like with Giovanni 1. We need to use Struggle. This is a good time as any to mention that getting Struggle is not just something I can do quickly. I have to use all my power points for Poison Sting, and we've used power point up because typically running out of power points is actually a bad thing. We're battling so many trainers back to back to back, it is a lot faster to have a ton of Poison Sting, and it's going to be pretty important later for reasons we'll discuss. With that said, it makes using them all up to get Struggle really, really annoying, and without a move deleter, 
we have this useless string shot so i have to go find a metapod it's really 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 irritating with that said this time i'm going to do something slightly different I'm not going to use up all the poison stings i'm going to try to keep some of them enough to knock out the pokemon before rhyhorn and nidoqueen the reason for this is that poison sting isn't doing that much less those pokemon don't do that much damage and that saves me on recoil making it a little bit easier to use struggle for rhyhorn and nidoqueen where i need as much hp as possible unfortunately in this battle i dramatically overestimate the number of poison stings i need so unsurprisingly i'm just going to end up losing the rhyhorn as we saw the last time it stacks a bunch of tail whips lowers my hp so we're just gonna have to try this again although i still feel pretty good about myself because you can see how much struggle did to nidoqueen so if we actually math this out correctly it's gonna be a pretty easy battle this time i have only 10 poison stings nidorino goes for fury attack hits five times horn attack focus energy we knock it out with a crit kangaskhan guard spec bite bite and we have a couple extra that's okay hopefully we poison rhyhorn we don't but you can see how much more struggle does although that was a crit this one wasn't we make it to nidoqueen with 104 critical hit does a ton of damage as we saw before and with 39 hp to spare we use the hybrid struggle strategy for the very first time to great success unfortunately against giovanni one this wouldn't have helped us because Giovanni starts with Onix, which was probably the most threatening Pokemon, but it is something useful to have in our back pocket, especially when you consider we have to battle Giovanni again, and that battle probably is going to be next to impossible, but we have a long way until we need to worry about that. Now, this might shock you, but I'm actually going to battle Sabrina before Koga, because I'm going to do a lot more damage to her psychic Pokemon. I go for Poison Sting, but it doesn't quite one-shot Kadabra, and it gets a crit. Mr. Mime goes for Barrier a couple times, and then goes for Confusion, which is not great. So we're probably not going to win this. Venomoth also has Psybeam and Leech Life. We do make it to Alakazam with 22 HP, but it quickly knocks us out with Psybeam. So you can kind of see what I was thinking here, but we might need to use Struggle or level up a little bit more. I battle Sabrina one more time because why the heck not? I'm already here. This time, Kadabra goes for Psychic and gets a critical hit, so it's looking pretty bad. Mr. Mime gets poisoned and it goes for Confusion. Crit knocks it out. Just like last time, Venomoth goes first for Psybeam, then for Leech Life. We're at 14 HP, but Alakazam can go for Psy Wave, which can do next to nothing, and then we get a critical hit, and we beat Sabrina on our second try. Struggle would have worked pretty well, but I'll take it. Again, does not open up any more of the game. In fact, it pretty much closes off everything. The only trainer we can beat now is Goga. But at least I can say that I am at about as high a level as I possibly can be to do this fight, unless I go back to Diglett K for like 10 more years. All right, so I go get Struggle. I'm going to go battle Koga. We're going to knock out coughing number one. It does use tackle. 194. We use struggle. Muck uses disable, which doesn't actually work. And we knock it out. But then coughing number two annoys us by using smokescreen. A bunch. And we miss. A bunch. So we're at 70 HP heading to wheezing. And we get lucky. We get self-destruct. I think we're going to survive. But it crits. But you can see what the strategy is going to be. Have enough HP that self-destruct won't knock it out. This should work. Alrighty, so. Coughing number one. Struggle, no smokescreen. Very good, 193. Struggle does half. X attack is good. We knock out Muck, 125. Struggle is very good. Smokescreen sucks, 84. Please use self-destruct. Okay, it's good. 49 damage is all it does. It actually took me like four more attempts just to get back to wheezing we got some really bad smokescreen luck but that worked really well in fact missing against wheezing would have even been better honestly within the context of this run that wasn't bad at all and now we have surf 
There are a bunch more trainers on the water we can battle. And we, of course, have access to Cinnabar Island, where we can go and battle the Fire-type gym leader that I'm sure we'll have a very easy time against. This has taken me 36 hours of game time. I'm going to try and battle the trainers in Blaine's gym because I need as much experience as I can get. Looks to be a good idea. You can see we battled all the swimmers, everyone on the water, and so we're at level 87 now. Hopefully, actually we just leveled up to level 88. Hopefully we'll be at level 89 by the time we battle Blaine. I still don't know if that's enough. I actually forgot to heal, but we are double Growlithe's level, more than that. So we go over Poison Sting, it actually does over half. Thankfully, Agility is also coded as a super effective move. And then Blaine starts going for Super Potion, so we actually take no damage going into Ponyta. It does take three hits to knock out Ponyta, and Ponyta actually misses, which is pretty good. Unfortunately, the good luck doesn't last forever, but it's still okay. Fire Spin does hit, but it only hits twice, so we're at 219 heading to Rapidash. Rapidash, though, its Fire Spin does quite a bit more damage, and so it looks like this battle is going to be a loss. It is poisoned and slowly losing HP. We make it to our canine with 84 remaining, but a Fire Blast will take care of that. And yeah, we're just going to lose all our HM users so we can keep the experience points. All right, I level up a little bit more. We're at level 89 and we're at full HP. It's going to be a 2 hit KO. This time Growlithe does use Ember, so we're at 231 heading to Ponyta. Ponyta hits with Fire Spin. I'm at under 200 heading to Rapidash. Rapidash heals, misses, misses again. So 198 for our canine. Our canine heals, hits with Fire Blast, and then I get burned. So we actually have a chance of winning if we didn't get burned, but I'm not going to turn down these experience points. So I'm just going to let all my other Pokemon faint that I should have deposited, truth be told, and I'm going to try again. All right, so we're still at level 89. We go for Poison Sting, Agility is good, we knock it out. Full HP for Ponyta. Ponyta is poisoned, that's going to be a 2 Ikkyo. It hits with Fire Spin. Unfortunately, it continues, and it hits a second time. So we're probably going to be at around, okay, 202, heading to Rapidash. Rapidash heals, Fire Spin misses, that's good. Another heal, Fire Spin misses. So 202 heading to Arcanine, Poison Sting, it heals. Ember is good. Another Poison Sting, it's Poison. Critical hit is bad. Another Ember, though. And, ah, oh, Super Potion, come on. No, there's Ember. We win. Yes! All right. Man, these battles. It's just about getting good luck, to be honest with you. But doesn't make it any less exciting when things finally go our way. Which they're about to stop. Because Giovanni number three is, I mean... There are very few things I remember from these runs. But how difficult Giovanni 3 was, I'll never forget. I'll never forget the amount of math we ended up doing just to figure out if this was even mathematically possible. And it's just... You know what? Let me just show it. It's the worst. 31 hours, 31 minutes. We're going to battle Giovanni number 3 for the very first time. And this is not going to go well. So I have Struggle Strategy... And I actually forgot to heal. That's my bad. But I'll still learn something about this battle. Rhyhorn looks to be a 5-hit KO, which isn't great. We lose a ton of HP. By the time we knock out Doug Trio, you can tell that we're not even going to make it past Nido Queen. So, I don't know. I mean, we're at level 91. We've beaten every trainer. We can theoretically go all the way to level 100. We have four rare candies. So I could get all the way to level 95 right now. I don't know, guys. We'll try again. We use Struggle. It's not very effective. Tail Whip, it's fine. Then Stomp. Then Tail Whip. We knock it out. We're going to one-shot Doug Trio. We're at 126. We're going to two-shot Nido Queen. Scratch misses. That's a Gen 1 miss. But while we might be able to knock out Nido King... We actually don't because it uses Thrash. We don't even have enough HP to have anything left for Rhydon. So Struggle simply cannot work. We're not getting attacked. I mean, we got attacked a little bit, but 
this is just not gonna work. The math doesn't work out. The only way this will be possible, of course we're not using items, those aren't allowed, is to maybe use a bit of the hybrid strategy, saving struggle for later, but don't forget the first Pokemon is Rhyhorn, which double resists Poison Sting. Regardless of what strategy we decide, I'm gonna level up in the Pokemon Mansion, it's new Diglett Cave. It's the place I find I get the most experience points the quickest. And like I said, if we get to level 96, we have four rare candies, and that will get us to level 100. I would hate to have to get all the way to level 100, but if we have to, we can. Now, I haven't used rare candies. I just want to see how this would work with 16 poison stings. So I really want Rhyhorn to get poisoned as soon as possible. It does on turn number four. That's not bad. We're also not getting attacked, which is really nice. It can go for Horn Drill. Finally, after some Tail Whips, it goes for Fury Attack. And by the time we knock it out, we only have six left. Dugtrio, unfortunately, can use Sand Attack, which it does twice. And we have three left for Nidoqueen. So I think we have too many here. We haven't missed yet, which is nice. We knock out Nidoqueen at 197. We miss. We knock out Nidoking at 130. And now Rhydon, we miss. We miss. We miss. Come on. All right, so that's 104, but then it uses Stomp. I think if we didn't miss any times, we may have had a chance to win. However, every time we were hit with Sand Attack, our attack was going up by a little bit, so keep that in mind. There is a pathway to victory here, but it's a narrow one. All right, now we're at level 96, and hopefully this is going to work, but there's only one way to find out. So we have 10 Poison Stings this time, and we get a first turn Poison, although Rhyhorn attacks us. We keep going for Poison Sting. That's okay. Hopefully we actually knock out Rhyhorn in time. Uh, Fury Attack, we're at 248. Another Fury Attack, we're at 240. Guard Spec, we're actually just going to have enough to knock it out. Doug Trio, Guard Spec, we knock it out. So it's at 209. We knock out Nidoqueen, it's going to be two hits. Guard Spec is good. 139 for Nidoking. Nidoking goes for guard spec, we're at 72, and now we go for struggle, horn drill, struggle, horn drill, struggle, this isn't going to work, it's not going to work, it hasn't attacked us a single time, and although we come very, very close to knocking out Rhydon, we don't do it, we got a little bit of bad luck versus the Rhyhorn, but we simply did not do enough damage, now part of that was having to use struggle against Dugtrio, if we can knock it out with Poison Sting, we might have enough HP remaining, but it's very hard to know exactly how many Poison Stings we need. Because if we poison quickly, we need less. We actually did poison quickly and we still needed more. But you get what I'm saying. It's not really easy to predict. And if we use Struggle versus Doug Trio, we just don't have enough HP for Rhydon. Plus, it didn't even attack us. Here's a good example of what happens when you have too many. So I have 14 Poison Stings. We get Poison right away. So it looks like things are going to go well. Remember last time, we had just one remaining. So this time, we should have maybe two or three, which should knock out Dugtrio. Rhyhorn, though, gets knocked out a little quicker, so we have actually six remaining for Dugtrio. He uses Slash, so we're at 220. We have three remaining for Nidoqueen. It goes for Tail Whip, then Scratch. We're at 144 for Nidoking. It doesn't attack us, but we're still at 77, which we know is too little for Rhydon. Also, as we talked about, it can just use Stomp. So I need probably about 100 HP in order to make it past Rhydon. Now we're at level 97, and I have 11 Poison Stings. We get a Poisoning on the second turn, but Rhyhorn's attacking a little bit more, which is a luck component I can't control. So... We need to really keep in mind how much HP we have after Rhyhorn. We knock it out. We have two for Dugtrio. It goes for Sand Attack and then Slash. And you can see me pausing. I'm considering whether it's worthwhile to continue this attempt or should we just start over. And I decide it's worthwhile just to see how things go. Unfortunately, we get bad luck against Nidoqueen and we're going to have way less HP. So... This, at this point, is just about gaining some experience points. Unfortunately, every time we lose, we get our power points back, and that means we can't just attempt Giovanni again. 
That said, we're probably going to need to be all the way at level 100. Let's be honest. Guys, we're at level 99. I'm using 12 poison stings. That's the number I settled on. This time we get poisoning on turn 3. And once again, we're getting bad luck versus Rhyhorn. We're clearly going to need to keep resetting on Rhyhorn if we want a good attempt. But I just want to try this at level 99 see what works. I have three Poison Stings for Doug Trio. It doesn't attack. 224 for Nito Queen. It uses Body Slam. 132 for Nito King. It uses Thrash. Only 58. No, 37. We know that's not nearly enough. We need triple that if we're going to beat Rhydon. So we get it to half HP before we knock ourselves out. Oh my goodness. The luck we're going to need for this is insane. Well, I got to level 100 and we did the math. I needed 226 after Doug Trio, 162 after Nito Queen, and 88 when I take on Rhydon. Anytime the numbers aren't there, I reset. This was my very first battle knowing this information, and you can see I kind of pause a little bit after the luck goes kind of badly versus Doug Trio, I get growled, and then I see that I don't have 162 after Nito Queen, and that I will not have 88, so I reset. Having three different benchmarks makes resetting a heck of a lot faster, and by getting faster resets, I get faster attempts, making this, which would otherwise take days, maybe only take hours. The sunk cost fallacy is important. And you can see, that Rhyhorn, too much damage, we try again. This can get unbelievably frustrating. You can get some really good luck early on against Rhyhorn, and it can all fall apart just so, so quickly. That's why the 226 post Doug Trio was a very important benchmark. Because we have to use Poison Sting against Rhyhorn, there's just a ton of RNG because of how many turns it is. So when you get a good attempt with 270 HP, you want to clutch it out. Doug Trio doesn't cooperate super well, but 248 heading to Nido Queen is really good. That's why I'm pausing here. It's exciting. I use Struggle, Scratch is good, 167. That's good. Nito King, though, uses Thrash, so no matter what, we're gonna fall just short. Of course, Rhydon makes things even worse by using Stomp, but assuming it does go for Fissure and Horn Drill, which do nothing, we need at least 88 HP. No ifs, ands, or buts. All you can do is just start another attempt. 12 Poison Stings seems to be optimal. Tail Whip, by the way, is kinda good because it deals slightly more damage, which will make the struggles better. You do want poisoning early, and you can see this attempt, we're not getting the same luck versus Rhyhorn, but that doesn't really matter because we might get even better luck versus Doug Trio. So we're at 231, we have two poison stings left for Doug Trio, and it thankfully gets poisoned, meaning we're at 231. We then get a crit, we're at 161. Now we just need 88, we knock out Nido King, and I'm in shock. For the first time, we have enough HP, Struggle, guard spec, struggle, stomp. This is annoying, but it's just the way it has to be. I will say that being able to do this on stream was a lot more fun. Usually I don't do these runs on stream, but I would have gone absolutely crazy. It was nice getting to talk to people and hey, having some math done for me, that's helpful as well. Thanks, Duke. But anyway, this is looking very promising. 259 for Doug Trio. Sand attack misses. Critical hit. All right. So we don't have the badge boost. Body slam, that's fine. 174 is actually better than last time. Critical hit, 107. Stomp, we can still make it. Tail whip. Crit, another tail whip. Oh my gosh, this is going to be close. No. <laughs> if it didn't use stomp, we would have won. If it didn't use Stomp, we would have won. <laughs> you can see, you can see how close it is. We're going to do this though. We're going to do this. It might take another hour, but we're going to do this. All right, another attempt. Poison Sting, Horn Drill's good. Tail Whip Miss is fine. Horn Drill's good. It's poison now. That's very good. All right, I don't need to do play-by-play -play here. It's looking pretty good. It hasn't actually damaged us yet. And is it not going to damage us? 
Okay, full HP to Dugtrio. Only two poison stings, but it's poisoned. And it knocks itself out. Sand attack missed. Oh my goodness. Struggle. Scratch is fine, even though it crit. 199 for Nido King. Struggle. Doesn't knock it out. Tackle's fine. 118. Struggle. Horndrill missed. Struggle. Horndrill missed. Struggle. Horndrill missed. Struggle. Guard spec. Struggle. Yes. <laughs> We did it! <laughs> we did it! This took like three hours, guys! Three hours! I didn't even know if this was gonna be possible! We beat Giovanni with Weedle, no items, eight badges, nothing can take that away! We can say we've done this! And this is supposed to be the easy part of the game! <laughs> oh god! We still have Rival 6 and the Elite 4! You know what? I got nothing else to say. Hopefully somehow Rival 6 is easier, but I don't even know. Oh, and by the way, you betcha I saved a cartridge. There is no way I'm losing my progress now. Oh god. Alright, let's go. Alright, so he leads with Pidgeot. We use Poison Sting. I'm gonna go with Poison Sting strats. Agility is good. 50-50 uses Agility or Wing Attack, and we get two Wing Attacks. So we're at 240 for Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn again, we have to use Poison Sting. We get a second turn Poisoning, which isn't too bad. We're at 216 now, 203. Miss, that's good. Another miss. Another miss. All right, 203, that's pretty good. Execute, not one shot, it goes for Solar Beam. 203 to Gyarados. Gyarados gets poisoned, Dragon Rage is fine. Hydro Pump, way less fine. Okay, well, at least we knock it out, 57. Alakazam uses Reflect and then Psychic. So, you know what? For our first try, that's not too bad. But obviously, we're going to have to do a heck of a lot better if we actually want to win. Just like Giovanni, I'm going to try some hybrid strats. 18 Poison Stings. We'll see how that works. We knock out Pidgeot in four, still. And it only uses one Wing Attack, which is good. We might have too many for Rhyhorn. We have 13 now. It is poisoned. So, we might have to decrease our Poison Stings. I don't quite know. We're at 223. All right, now 208. And we're going to be at 208 for Execute. Poison Sting would work against Execute, but we need, from what we have now, five less. Because I would like to use Struggle against Gyarados, although we get pretty good luck. So 208. Alakazam, though, we definitely need to use Struggle. So that was not great. Not terrible. But if we'd used Struggle against Alakazam, we would've won. Obviously, there's a luck component to how many Poison Stings we need. So I'm not going to decrease them yet. We got one Wing Attack, Agility, another Agility, two Wing Attacks. That's average luck. That's fine. Now, we actually might want it to get poisoned a little bit later because we need a little fewer Poison Stings. This might be a little too late. We'll see what happens here. But as we knock out Rhyhorn, we only have three left. So, we're going to have to use Struggle against Gyarados. Unfortunately, Execute hits with Leech Seed, so that's not great. We're at 121 after we knock out Gyarados. Now we knock out Alakazam in one hit, but with 60 HP, we don't one-shot, and we don't have enough HP. So, we're going to need, what, about 100 HP for Charizard? But then it can't attack us? This is going to be a little risky. So, we just keep going. There's not much else we can do. We need, obviously, certain ranges again, but unlike last time, I don't know what they are. Also, if Rhyhorn uses Tail Whip, our attack is higher, and that's another factor I can't really predict for. The badge boost glitch. Unintentional this time. I'm just kind of seeing what's going on here. I don't really have any kind of great strategy, but obviously our HP is just way too low this time. At only 120, there's just no way this is going to work. We knock out Execute, this time we have three left for Gyarados, but we're not even going to make it past Gyarados. I just reset. Having to battle Rival 6 again and again, sure it's a little frustrating, but after Giovanni, it's a bit like a vacation. This time as Rhyhorn comes out, we have 260. We want a bunch of Tail Whips, but it never to attack us, because ideally we will one-shot Charizard. If we can one-shot Charizard, things go a heck of a lot easier. So it's going to Potion, which sucks, and it used Stomp a bunch. We're at 168. We have four for Execute. Almost one shot. So that's pretty good. 
Gyarados is going to be a 3 KO. Leer and Bite, we're at 101 for Alakazam. We use Struggle, we only have 40 HP, and we don't quite one-shot. So, it looks like it might be impossible to one-shot Charizard, which would be really bad. For those of you who are wondering, we talked about this at the beginning, but I have maximum IVs or DVs, and I did check, all my stat experience is maxed out. So this is literally as good a Weedle as you could theoretically have. We've been stuck on Rival 6 for 20 minutes, which normally would be a long time, but for this challenge is nothing. We get a critical hit wing attack, which really sucks, and I think about resetting, but it doesn't hit us again, so we're at 237, that's okay. The Rhyhorn we poison really early. This can be okay if we get good luck from Gyarados, because then we'll have more HP. The Rhyhorn isn't attacking us, which is actually really, really good. And it's maybe possible, yeah, we're at 237, heading to execute. You can see we almost one-shot, not quite. Gyarados, Leer is good. Dragon Rage is good, 197. And we just ran out of Poison Sting at the right time. We one-shot Alakazam. We use Struggle on Charizard, but it doesn't one-shot. And we survive. We won. We won. No! <laughs> we needed, like, what, three more HP? No! I thought we had that! Come on! So, that was about the perfect battle. We have enough HP for Flamethrower. We tank it. We knock it out with our second struggle. We know it has to happen. It just all needs to fall into place. Takes another seven minutes, but we finally look like we're going to get a good battle here. Critical hit. And another critical hit. Full HP. That's really good. Rhyhorn isn't attacking us. Tail Whips are good. One Stomp, that's fine. Fury Attack, not the biggest deal. Another Tail Whip hitting would be nice, but it keeps missing. It's going for Horn Drill. If we can get a knockout on Gyarados, that would be big, but I don't know if we will. We have four left. That means Execute is going to take two. So we're going to have to use Struggle against Gyarados. Hopefully it doesn't attack. Leer is fine. Hydro Pump, well, it doesn't do that much. 195 is okay. And we're actually at 134. That's more than last time. Struggle, Flamethrower. No, we needed more than 20, so I was wrong. It wasn't just three or four, but we're so close. We're so, so close. All right, we know eventually one of these are going to go our way. It's a matter of time. Agility is good. Agility is good. One wing attack. That's fine. We got the crit. We have poison early. That can be good. Hopefully not too early. We don't want to lose too much HP to struggle. Hopefully Rhyhorn doesn't attack us anymore. 233 is pretty good. It seems to be not. Okay, so we're at 233. We have a little bit too many poison stings. That's not great. Hopefully Hydro Pump's bad. Ooh, maybe it'll be a 4KO. No. So now we have one extra for Alakazam. Oh my god, it used Reflect. We're going to knock it out. 169. That's enough. Guys, that's enough. Will you struggle? Please don't burn. Yes! So we needed actually 28. That's what we needed. 28 in order to knock it out. We were so close those last couple times. But finally, we beat Rival 6. And we finished the challenge. No, well, the challenge is over. I know you guys are expecting a really epic battle versus the Elite Four, but I knew going in, this is where the challenge would end. I'm not going to sit there and pretend like, oh my god, no. I knew going in, that's the reason I didn't want to make this video. It's not possible. And in order to understand why this isn't possible, we're going to skip ahead to Laura Lee, who's not even the most impossible that makes this run impossible. Now, when I say impossible, actually, let me just talk about Laura Lee first, then we can talk about some definitions. So Laura Lee leads with Dugong, okay? Dugong has Rest, which is coded as a psychic move, which means Laura Lee will always use it. This is why you can soft lock here. Poison Sting, it doesn't do enough to three-shot Dugong. And because it doesn't do enough, you need to crit with max roll every single time, well, not the first time, in order for this to be possible. If you don't, all that happens is Dugong will recover, and you have to start the process all over again. 
So what are the chances you get three critical hits? Ignore the max roll thing. What are the chances you get three critical hits? Well, Weedle's base speed, which every Weedle has, is 50. The way it works in Generation 1 is you divide that by 512, which gives you approximately 10%, more like 9.7. Doesn't really matter. Because in order to get that three times in a row, you need to multiply that by itself, or exponent 3, and that gives you roughly a 1 in a 1,000 chance. Actually, if you want me to be exact, it's approximately 1 in 1,074, give or take. Now, shiny odds are about 1 in 8,000. So, yeah, that's what we're dealing with here. And once you get past the dugong, it's not like the rest of her team is a joke either. Cloyster is pretty difficult. So are Lapras and Jinx. The only thing that's easy is Slowbro because it can only use Amnesia. But yeah, that's pretty anticlimactic. All that work just to say Laura Lee's not possible? Are you sure, J-Rose? Well, here's the thing, guys. Laura Lee, if I wanted to spend a month, heck, John spent two years on a video. I could beat Laura Lee. That actually isn't the issue. Bruno isn't the issue either, nor is Lance. The issue is Agatha. Agatha is statistically so improbable. Honestly, I'm just going to skip ahead. I know I didn't show the end of the Laura Lee battle, but I mean, it doesn't count. We're using save states. I just wanted to get past to show you why Agatha actually makes this just totally unfeasible for a human. So what would need to happen to beat Agatha? First off, we need to get a lot of critical hits. I'm not sure exactly how many, but we need enough because we won't have enough power points. All of Agatha's Pokemon resist Poison Sting and Gengar resist them double. But there's a bigger problem than that. They'll attack us. And you see Nightshade? 56 HP? Only six Nightshades to knock me out. And then there's of course Confuse Ray, Hypnosis, Dream Eater. There are just so many things Agatha can do. And there's nothing I can do about that. Now, in isolation, Agatha isn't too bad. By which I mean if we use save states and isolate every individual move, sure, there's a way through the fight. The problem is, and the biggest flaw sometimes people make when they think about probabilities, is you need to multiply all those chances together. You need all the good things to happen in one perfect battle. And the chances of that happening? Not just the first Gengar, who I didn't knock out a single time, by the way, but all five of her Pokemon is one in several trillion. You, well, I mean, come on. You can think of those numbers are so big, it means nothing. I mean, think about all the unlikeliest things we know about in our world. This is way less likely. And remember how I said we're going to talk about what impossible means? To me, this is impossible. If it's infeasible that a human being can do it within their natural life, then even though on a theoretical sense it is possible, it is practically impossible. Putting it in the same category as other Pokemon like Metapod, Caterpie, etc. And so, unfortunately, despite our best efforts, Weedle finds itself at the very bottom of our tier list it did not finish. And although with items this is easy, and with save states this is easy, those aren't allowed in our rules. In other generations, maybe with Z moves, Bug Bite, etc., perhaps there is a game that Weedle can defeat, but unfortunately, it is neither red, blue, nor yellow. Even though yellow is a little different, it ends up having a very similar problem. And so that's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.